terms of actually wanting to make the site better and own up to mistakes that have been made by you or by others or by all of us. And quite frankly, at this point, I'm out. I'm out of the website. I don't want to be part of this anymore. If my effort and my work for more than a year, more than 30 plus pieces of content is not going to be appreciated. And serious, that dude? there's not going to be any you? changes going forward. I ran only SP for four years. And- Are you serious, dude? Mm-hmm. Are you serious? Yeah, and like, so here, and are you serious, dude? This is another tactic I've seen before with bad bosses. Not going to be any you? changes going forward. This I ran only SP for four years, and people did a hell of a lot more work for me than you've done. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so- oh. the, yeah, the pity game. You're, so I, I had another company, and other people let me scam them steal from them and <laughs> fuck them around for way more and way longer than you have you fucking bitch like that's what he's saying mm-hmm. he's saying oh, i screwed more people over before breakfast than you could possibly imagine and they bent over and let me so why aren't you asshole um, um, one last question um just kind of a shot in the dark here how much is Enthusiast paying for game you mentoring the site as a whole. No, don't do that. Okay. <laughs> but I'm <laughs> not telling you that. So he sold the company mm-hmm. right out from under them, took all the money. Uh, they all lost their jobs, presumably. Or I don't know if they went on to somewhere else. I doubt they wanted to work with him again. Um, and, uh, and there you go. And that would be at that point, I think, the second time he had done that. Mm-hmm. First with OSP. Then with Gameumentary, that was what we were listening to. Then he went to the Escapist, apparently, and now he started second win. After talking to Nick's former co-workers from various outlets, I continued to find threads and trends that led back to his Gameumentary days. Even the little things became big things. Example, Nick drew heavy criticism back when he made the Kingdom Come Deliverance documentary. The head of the company was a gamer gator and shared alt-right views. Nick approached this controversy purely... Okay, we can ignore that because, of course, like really? I said... Really? Face, for- I'm buying that game now. Uh- Frost, <laughs> uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance, yeah, you'd, you'd like that game, Ryan. It's very difficult. Yeah, but it was, it was published by Deep Silver. Basic- I hate Deep Silver with the fucking... Yeah, bathroom. but you basically... You play as a peasant, and it's very realistic. As in, don't expect to be fighting dragons by level 10. Mm-hmm. Like, you are a peasant. You have no training. You have no like video game logic to help you become incredible immediately. You are a peasant and you have to become what you become through fucking hard graft. <laughs> uh, that sounds like your kind of game anyway. Um, but, but, but anyway, the point is, uh, yeah, they were from Warhorse obsessed Studio, this game. The head of the company was a gamer gator and shared all right views. Make a process. The point I was making was that the frost himself, of course, remains at least in his own mind for now, a leftist and not a Gamergator, even though this video is exactly Gamergate. He has Gamergated Nick Calandra with this video. He has exposed him for mm. lacking any ethics or integrity in journalism. That is the mission statement of Gamergate. <laughs> this controversy pure reference documentary. The first of the company anyway. was a gamer gator and shared all right views. So he's calling it this right, controversy but... purely from Warhorse yeah. Studios angle without critically examining the director's stances, which some viewers thought was a bad call, causing Nick to argue with them. This felt inconsistent with Nick because I know he believes in asking the hard questions, having before ambushed people he was interviewing with uncomfortable questions the interviewee asked to be withheld beforehand. Nick trades good press coverage and holds back criticism in exchange for paid documentaries, trips. Uh, more embezzlement, more, more handouts, more kickbacks. Fuck, Nick! What are you doing, man? Jesus Christ, this is the craziest thing I've ever covered. This is the craziest thing we've ever covered on this show anyway. Jesus yeah. Christ, episode Where's... 36. Remember the name. Where, Remember where... the number. Where are our kickbacks? Where are our brown envelopes? Come on, Kotaku, give me a brown envelope. Yeah, I'll give you you a positive review. (laughs) Oh, no, 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 no. Because more likely than that, they'd just send Alyssa around. (laughs) Gear and job opportunities, and a lot of his connections stem from his gameumentary days. His staff at the time was not pleased when they found out. This recontextualized one of Nick's patterns. It's a behavior. A lot of Nick's personal tastes and biases that he pushed on his staff for coverage or restricted them from criticizing led back to his PR connections. He was making deals behind the scenes without them knowing. I even found one where he threw in a positive review to sweeten the deal, all for flights. No, cannot disclose the games because it would put writers at risk. Sometimes a game at an outlet will only have one or two providing coverage, making it easy to know who divulged. Right, gifts, job favors, documentary opportunities, none disclosed. That made us look at his odd social media. 
The problem there, says TJAP Steve, is that Brown Envelope is your nickname for Atreus, right? Mm. <laughs> um, oh, of course, we've got interactions here between uh, Nick, oh, the Fink, no. and uh, and Black Greg Miller himself, the uh, the fat prince of who, what, where, Khalif Adams. What does uh, what does Atreus call him? Like booty. Big oh, booty what, or something. what the fuck did he used to call him? Booty um, daddy or something? I can't oh, remember. I forgot. I forgot. Uh, it says, so there's them talking about a load of shit. Uh, people spending way too much time on Twitter to build their brand, tweeting out everything they have. Sugar, Sugar Bear. Bear Adam. Sugar Bear Adams. Yeah. That's it, yeah. Um, being way too open with their personal life and not keeping a healthy distance from strangers online, I think is a huge contributor to this fucking hell hypocrisy as, as well as sociopath and fucking snake thy name is nick calandra i mean he's literally describing himself with that tweet <laughs> he's permanently terminally online tweeting out every thought he has to build his brand being way too open with his personal life not keeping a healthy distance from strangers online yeah stupid stupid man it's bitten him a few times now anyway Any addiction in a different light i also thought nick flew off the handle but something was off Nick had already been made aware of his problem and vowed to be better back when he was tricked into publishing false evidence. He'd be oh, and that brings us up to more recent times. Mm. Publishing false evidence. That's the Grums thing. Yeah. 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 This is, this is the, um, yeah. See, look, this is, this is where Frost starts talking, showing his private conversations with Nick, which is uh, when he, this is Nick preparing to post all that fake crap that Grums and Giga Bear put together. And Frost tells him, you've got him dead to rights if this can be followed up. Just for your sake, easy on the Twitter dunks and roasts. Take him out surgically and it's a free win for you. Yeah, that's not how it went. Went too far in April and chilled out a little, or at least kept it defensive for the most part. That was Behaved April. himself, Bloody sort hell. of, and was a bit more vague and defensive. Then he went on the attack almost out of nowhere until he embarrassed himself on a podcast, which I warned him about. That would be Side Scrollers a couple of weeks ago when he showed up on there when... Uh, Stuttering Craig was talking about doing the um, Real Game Awards mm. Which I still maintain is a good idea I know not everyone agrees with me but I like it um, <clears throat> Yeah this is him Arguing with Craig uh, Craig is saying I oh, know Nick says you're not going to goad me by No ballsing me I'll come chat with you about This I'm decidedly curious how you're going to run This thing Stuttering Craig says great I'll DM you a link to the show but first you have to Allow me to DM you because, you know, after our last conversation about you coming on the show, you felt the need to close off communication. Mm. So he blocked him or, or closed his DMs to him. Anyway, once you do that, I'll send you the link. We'll probably get we'll get to it probably 15 minutes or blah, blah, blah. Frost, the narrator of this video, says, how's about you two talk it out like adults in the DMs and leave it at that? Should be fine if this is all about communication and clarity and not content. So, yeah, Frost is basically telling Nick, don't do it. You will get destroyed. And he still does it. I, I don't he, think we should worry. Destroyed. I don't think we should worry about content creators um, of a progressive nature like Nick Calandra. I think we should be more worried at progressive content creators that, uh, oh, I don't know, have a functioning brain like Frost mm. of Rivia. Yeah. See, th uh, Frost... As, he, as I've said, he is a liberal, um, certainly one with a lot more self-awareness than we regularly run into. Mm. Um, certainly someone of a higher intelligence, uh, a bit more rational, and someone who seems to cling to the actual ideology in some ways anyway, rather than just grifting on it like Nick Calandra. I don't, I'm not convinced Nick Calandra actually believes in any of this. He's a champagne socialist. Whereas Frost of Rivia genuinely does want to sort of decentralize the journalism space. And fair enough. That actually, I, I kind of agree with. Uh